most of today's statistics will tell you I should be dead or in prison. But instead, I'm the owner of a vibrant small business. I'm a community leader and I'm your keynote speaker this morning. I was not wealthy growing up, but my imagination resulted in spiritual prosperity. My grandmother did not waste time on external factors. She did not prevent me from going outside, but instead she encouraged me to be a friend to the crack addict and a friend to the wino. She did not encourage me to arm myself with guns, but instead she armed me with the power of purpose and a vision. She did not impose more rules on to control me, but instead she showered me with freedom and trusted in the principles that she had taught me. My grandmother taught me the power of a dream combined with the necessary action and positive behavior will lead to choices that will allow me to have whatever I want in life. My grandmother trusted that if she didn't help, that if she helped me to understand my purpose, along with teaching me how to believe it was achievable, then my choices would not lead me to taking the life of another human being or using violence as a legitimate solution. The inheritance I received from my grandmother is not one of monetary value, but instead one that will provide residual value to our community through positive choices and the willingness to sacrifice for others. My life story is the personification of sacrifice and the outcome of what may happen if you dare to dream or chase your vision. Success will not allow herself to be cheapened by associating with luck because the only way to reach success is to embrace her passionately and you can only embrace her passionately by, through living a life filled with purpose. Life is this game of choices, and we control our destiny through the choices that we make daily. We have no control over the choices and decisions of others or the many other externalities that exist in our society. Every one of us has the ability to control our mind and the images we vision, our actions and our behaviors. Outside of those three areas, we have no control. But yet often, we only spend 20% of our time in those three areas and 80% of our time trying to control everything else. Our country can experience unrelenting change if we come together as a community and then sacrifice our time, our talent, and our energy to help others vision their purpose, gain control over their actions, and help them reach the heights with positive behavior. We live in a country with endless possibilities, and we have a responsibility to help our young leaders to understand the significance of purpose. All of us here today are called to share our passion and energy with others to create and foster the long-term sustainability of our neighborhoods and community. Many of us believe that our past experiences and our current challenges are in control and that we are merely their puppets. I tell you once again, it is time for change. I've come to Winston-Salem State University today to, to deliver the message that you are in control. You are the creator of your own universe. And it's time you take responsibility for yourself. Take back control of your life by elevating your thinking, actions, and behaviors above past experiences and current challenges. Hey, they say I didn't come from the right family and, um, you know, I didn't come from the right part of town and um, I'm, I'm too young and, um, you know, my father didn't love me. But you are looking at a leader that is rising to greatness because I have proactively chosen to ignore my challenges and perceived failures and focus on the enormous responsibility I have to fulfilling my chosen purpose and repaying our creator for the wonderful gift of life. Each one of us can stop violence in our communities and there is no reason we must feel handicapped into thinking the only way to solve the problem is through more legislation, bigger prisons, and a larger police force. Today, we 
all need to begin to take responsibility for the condition of our neighborhoods, schools, and community. We have a choice this morning. We can continue to abdicate our responsibility of serving our fellow man, or we can develop compassion and a desire to fundamentally shift the tide in our communities through the practice of sacrifice, along with a desire to help people to internally make a change. The change I have spoken to you about this morning will not be easily achieved because we are naturally fearful of the unknown. But I tell you, if we do not sacrifice today as a community, then tomorrow we will die as individuals. We habitually focus our energy on external factors because we feel that we have the ability to control them. We ignore those factors that are unseen because we fear them. However, we must focus on those things that are unseen because those things that are seen are temporary, but those things that are unseen are eternal. Thank you.